Hello everyone and welcome to this video on how to assign ICD-10 CM diagnosis codes for conditions from the digestive and genital urinary systems. These codes will be between K00 to K95 for digestive and N00 to N99 for genital urinary. So some of the common conditions you might see in the digestive system. First, let's start with cholecystitis. Cholecystitis is an inflammation of the gallbladder and cholelithiasis is another name for gallstones. Gastroenteritis is an inflammation of the stomach and intestines. Diverticulitis is inflammation of the diverticula. Colitis is inflammation of the colon. An ulcer is an open sore. These can be internal or external. And a hernia is when part of an organ is displaced and protrudes through the wall or cavity, such as through the abdominal wall. Most common causes of GI bleeding are gastro or intestinal ulcers, as well as from diverticular diseases of the intestine. Polyps are another common thing you will see as a coder. Polyps are growths that form on the lining of the colon, and the type of polyp is used to predict if that polyp growth will develop into cancer. We have adenoma or adenomatosis polyps. Those are the most co common polyps, and those are most likely the ones that will turn into cancer. The second most common type of polyp is called a hyperplastic polyp. These have a small chance of turning into cancer. So we code K63.5 for a polyp that is not documented as admetosis or hyperplastic, even if the site of the polyp is known. If the documentation states that the polyp is adenomatosis, we will assign a code from D12, and this code is based on the anatomical location or site of that polyp. We also want to code if a patient has a personal history of a polyp if it's relative to their care. So the personal history of a polyp we code by site. So Z87.19 is used for a personal history of a hyperplastic colon or rectal polyp, and Z86.01 is for a history of an adenoma or neoplastic polyp. Then we have code Z86.010, which is used for a history of an unspecified colon polyp. So let's do a practice case. In this scenario, we have a patient who's 54 years old who is being seen for hematochesia or blood in the stool. After diagnostic workup, it's determined that the patient has diverticulitis of the small intestine with the hemorrhage. So what codes are assigned? I would recommend you pause the video here, look up this case, and then we're gonna go over the codes. Okay, so first we're gonna look up diverticulitis in the alphabetical index, the front of our ICD-10 CM codebook. So go to D to diverticulitis. From there, we're gonna go to intestine, and then we're gonna pick small, because our documentation said with hemorrhage, we're gonna pick with bleeding, and our code is K57.13. You then wanna verify that code in the tabular, make sure there's not any special inclusion or exclusion notes. There's not, so the correct code is K57.13. Let's do another practice case. In this scenario, our patient is a 26-year-old female who's admitted for acute cholecystitis with cholelithiasis. A laparoscopic cholecystectomy was performed without complications. Again, I recommend you pause here, look up the codes for this procedure and diagnosis, and come back and unpause to hear the answers. So what codes are assigned for this case? 
So the first thing we're gonna code is the diagnosis, which we really have two in this scenario, right? Our patient has acute cholecystitis with cholelithiasis. Those are two different conditions. The nice thing is we have one diagnosis code. It's a combination code that includes both the acute cholecystitis and the cholelithiasis in our code description. So in the front of your ICD-10 CM code book, you should have opened up to C and from there, you would look up cholecystitis. Our subterms we can pick with calculus, and it tells us to see cholelithiasis with cholecystitis. And then once we look there, under acute, we can pick with gallstones in the gallbladder, and it tells us to see calculus gallbladder with cholecystitis, acute. So now we go and retrace our steps one more time. We're gonna go to C and then to calculus, gallbladder. Our indentation is gonna be with cholecystitis acute and our correct code is going to be K80.00. You then wanna verify that in the tabular. Now we have a procedure that was performed as well, the laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So if our patient was in the inpatient setting, we are going to code this with an ICD-10 PCS procedure code. So let's go ahead and look in that book, look up our root operation, which would be resection as they are taking out the entire gallbladder. So once we look up resection gallbladder, we are given characters 0FT4, Four. You then flip to table 0FT, row 4. The fifth character, we're going to pick 4 for percutaneous endoscopic because our procedure was done via laparoscopy. And then our sixth and seventh character are both Z. So the correct codes for this case are K80.00 and 0FT44ZZ. Now, the common diseases of the genital urinary system. Commonly, as a coder, you are going to see a patient who has renal failure. The renal failure can be acute or chronic. When hypertension and renal disease are present, remember that our coding guidelines tell us to code as a causal relationship between the hypertension and the renal disease unless the documentation from the physician states otherwise, we are to assume and code as a causal relationship exists between the two. Other conditions you see are cystitis or inflammation of the bladder, hematuria, which is blood in the urine, nephritis, which is inflammation of the kidneys, nephrolithiasis, which is kidney stones, So we do have specific guidelines for chapter 14. Digestive system coding, we did not have any specific coding guidelines. There's just a placeholder for future coding guidelines. I just want to talk about a couple of these guidelines. So when we're coding chronic kidney disease, our coding guidelines dictate based on the stage of the kidney disease. Stage one is coded to N18.1. Stage two is mild and it's coded to N18.2. Stage three is moderate and it's coded to N18.3. Stage four is severe and that's coded to N18.4. Stage five is coded to N18.5. And then we have end stage renal disease and that's coded to N18.6. We have chronic kidney disease and kidney transplant status. So when we're coding for a patient who already had a transplant in place, you want to assign the current stage of the chronic kidney disease plus the Z code, Z94.0, to show that the patient is a transplant status, meaning they've already had the transplant performed. If we're coding chronic kidney disease with other conditions like diabetes mellitus, hypertension, remember to sequence per the conventions in the tabular list. There are instructions of which code we would put first 
And that's what I mean by sequencing. So always verify those codes in the tabular list so you can get your instructions for sequencing there. Okay, let's do our practice case. So we have a 44-year-old male patient who was admitted with chronic kidney disease, that's stage three. Our patient also has diabetes mellitus type one and hypertension. So again, pause your recording, look up these codes. We're gonna have three, right? Chronic kidney disease, diabetes, and hypertension. And then come back, unpause, and let's go through these answers. So hopefully the first step you did was to go to the disease, the kidney disease. So we're gonna look up disease, kidney, chronic, and we can pick hypertensive there. So once we're there, it says C, hypertension, kidney. Since we have a causal relationship with chronic kidney disease and hypertension, we're gonna go to hypertension, kidney, and then the specific stage of our kidney disease, which in this scenario, it's stage three. So for the hypertension, you should see I12.9, and then the tabular list, once we verify it, tells us to also assign for our chronic kidney disease, which again, ours is stage three. It references the N18.1 to N18.4. You can just flip to the tabular and look at those codes to know that your stage three would be N18.3, or you could look this up in the alphabetical index and then verify in the tabular as well. But since that instruction was given us given to us in the tabular list by the hypertensive code, we are okay to just go to the tabular for N18.3 and assign that way. Now, for the diabetes, you should have looked up D in the alphabetical index and then diabetes. Make sure you're under diabetes mellitus and then pick type one. We also would pick with chronic kidney disease and that gives us E10.22. So you verify all your codes in the tabular and the three codes you should have are I12.9, N18.3, and E10.22.